the IO games genre achieved viral status almost overnight. Today, I'll show you the history of the seven most popular IO games and how they conquered the internet. However, the beginnings were not easy. Everything started in 2015 when biologist and video game developer Matthias Valadares got the idea of making a game about controlling a cell and growing larger by consuming smaller cells in a petri dish like environment. He decided to advertise it on 4chan, posting the rules of the game and screenshot. At first, the game was called Vor IO, but someone in the comments suggested changing it to agar. Agar is a jelly-like substance that is well known in biology. The creator liked the idea, and to this day, this game is known as Agar IO. But hey, why not use popular domains like .com or .net? The IO domain name comes from the internet country code assigned to the British Indian Ocean Territory. However, it has been repurposed in this context to stand for Input Output. The choice of the IO domain was likely due to its availability. Earlier, almost no one used this domain, but after the rise of Agar IO's popularity, other developers started jumping on the trend and named their games with the end IO. In fact, IO games have no hardware requirements thanks to their simplicity. All you really need is a stable internet connection, so it was a perfect type of game to play on boring computer lessons in school. However, the popularity of Agar IO at the beginning wasn't big. Mateus Valadares didn't plan to achieve significant popularity. He was just an ordinary biology student who created a game as a hobby in his free time. But with time, as big YouTubers like PewDiePie started recording Agar IO, the popularity unexpectedly skyrocketed. <laughs> Fake me! Fake me! Let Josh eat yourself! Nice! Yes, Courtney. he will! You're picking Billy up! Jelly. Yes! yes! 5K! <laughs> the creator's life changed completely in a few weeks. He was making absurd amounts of money every single day. As simple as it is, the replayability and easy access allowed for the game to completely explode online, specifically on YouTube, as watching this game is kind of satisfying. The formula of this game is really addictive, and what's more, there are many ways to maintain long-term players, such as adding a level system with rewards, skins, or a party system them to play with friends. If not that, Agar IO would probably have died three months after its peak. But thanks to this, it lasted an additional few years. Later, Agar IO has been released on mobile phones. The mobile version of Agar IO is slightly worse than the browser version, but something is better than nothing. However, in Agar IO, you can split up to a maximum of 16 pieces. So, over time, for pro players, it was not enough, and other programmers started creating knockoffs like Alice IO, Gata IO, or Senpa IO, which allowed for much more possibilities. Each of these games has its charm, but none managed to surpass the popularity of the original Agar IO. However, there was a problem with Agar IO that existed from the beginning of the game. Oh my god, I hate the new bots. Why do they run away from me? Morse. Morse is a bot and I think the other guy is controlling them. Bots. The person who had them could control the bots as if they were an ordinary player. And in the meantime, dozens of small bots were falling into the owner, giving him a lot of mass. Bots could be bought in foreign sites, but you could also make your own for free if you knew how. The community was tired of this and created a strike calling themselves hashtag stopbots in the game. The developer listened to the players and added an update that prevented bots. However, a new problem appeared. Gaining mass without bots turned out to be difficult because opponents alone were not enough to build a significant mass. So what to do now? Well, the developer had to choose between bad and worse. So he removed the blockade and bots, and today, bots are a normal view when you play Agar IO. I'll talk more about bots later, so keep this in mind. Everything I said before was just the beginning. Now let's look at the most popular IO game in history, Slither IO. The creator of Slither IO, Steven house was inspired to create the game while he was experiencing financial problems. He long wanted to create an online multiplayer game, but the only option for the development at the time was an Adobe Flash. And not wanting to use this method, he gave up the idea for a while. House finally developed the game when he realized he could make browser games similar to games such as Agar IO. The most difficult part of the development is making each server stable enough to handle 600 players at a time. House struggled to find space in servers. After six months of development, Slither IO was released in March 2016, with servers supporting up to 500 players. The rules are kind of similar to Agar IO, but here you're a snake instead of a cell. You can eliminate other snakes by forcing them to burrow their heads into your body. Larger snakes can circle smaller ones, slowly tightening up until the smaller snake has no choice but to crash into you. The only way House could make revenue was to display advertising in the app after the player's worm died. This option could be removed for $4. He chose not to sell virtual currency or power-ups so that those who paid would not have an advantage over players who did it. As there was no money to advertise the game, the only way to promote the game was through YouTube. A few weeks after its release, the bigger YouTube YouTubers like PewDiePie uploaded the gameplay from this game on their channels, which continued to the blow up in popularity. Yeah! Gonna get the longest f***ing snake! Oh my god! Oh my god! Why is this so hard? Why is being a 
work so hard. At the same time, Hal's worked on updates to stabilize the game and provide a better experience for players. By the end of 2016, Slither IO had become Google's most searched video game of the year in the United States. However, maybe some of you remember that, but there was one very popular video that showed a hidden bonus level in Slither IO. The creator of this video documented the steps required to get there, getting past 8,000 points, and then heading directly towards the wall, where the secret path lies hidden. Obviously, it was fake, but I'm sure many people after watching this video purposely hit the wall. There have been a lot of Slither IO knockoffs, but I'll talk more about that in the mobile game section soon. For now, let's look at Deep IO. It's the second game made by Mateus Valadares a year later after the release of Eager IO. Here, you control tanks represented by simple geometric shapes. As you gain experience, you level up, allowing you to upgrade your tank attributes such as health, bullet speed, damage, and reload speed. There are various tank classes to choose from, each with its unique abilities and play styles. I like that once you finally die, you can still come back with some pre-existing levels, instead of having to go back to the first level. But what if you don't like tanks and want something more natural? Well, there is Mopio. It features a gameplay where players start as small animals and have to consume food to grow in size and evolve into more powerful creatures. You can choose many different animals to play. Like many free-to-play games, Mopio incorporated monetization elements such as cosmetic items, providing a source of revenue for the developers. Over time, the game evolved with the addition of new animals and biomes. There were also some controversies when the game was sold. New owners made decisions that the community wasn't satisfied with, but that's a small detail. The next game is something a little bit different than I presented before. Cronker IO is a first-person shooter game. It features simple, pixelated graphics similar to classic arcade and early console games. Players can customize their characters with a variety of skins and other cosmetic items. It was initially released as a browser game, but in 2020, Cronker IO was released on platforms like Steam, making it accessible to a wider audience. Cronker IO developed a dedicated community of players, content creators, and map makers who contributed to the game's ongoing success. Some players and groups organized tournaments and competitive events within the game, leading to the emergence of an esports scene. While the game faced competition from other shooters, its unique blend of accessibility and community-driven content kept it relevant and popular. But what if you prefer the classic IO games in 2D? No problem. There is Survive IO. This is a shooter battle royale game played from a top-down perspective. The game features simple lo-fi graphics with minimalist designs that add to its vibe. Just like in Fortnite, the game offers a diverse range of weapons and items scattered throughout the map. The game receives regular updates, and in 2023, it was rebranded to Bit Heroes Arena. However, there is also a similar game to Survive IO, which is Zombs Royale IO. However, it's almost the same game, but less popular, so I'll skip that. Now let's talk about IO games for mobile phones. There are a lot of knockoffs to Ager IO and Slither IO, but besides that, some companies have noticed the potential of IO games and are producing them massively. I'm sure you recognize these types of ads, like Your Mom vs. Dad or Level 1 vs. 1000. The main goal for programmers is to make the game satisfying and not requiring much thinking, to interest as many kids as possible. The most popular mobile IO game is Paper IO. Here, players compete to claim as much territory as possible. You must balance the risk of traveling into unclaimed territory with a reward of expanding their territory. Traveling too far can be unsafe due to attacks from opponents. But are there really true opponents? Well, let's talk about bots. You've probably heard about bots that are controlled by artificial intelligence. It might be fake opponents or teammates that can replace actual players in your game. Some games declare that they're not using bots, but after disconnecting from the internet, the game still works perfectly. But this is not a minority. It happens in most of the games. Some of these single-player games require you to have internet, otherwise you won't be able to play. It's just so that they can show advertisements and for data collection. Single-player game requires internet connection to function. Indie multiplayer browser game, no internet connection required. Now let's ask a really important question. Is it bad or not? Well, as the game at the beginning phase doesn't have any players, it is a must-have that developers had to implement. But on the other side, developers are kind of cheating on you. In reality, any other established games made by corporations use bots that pretend to be normal players, and you would never think that it's not human, if you haven't heard about them before. I think that the truth lies somewhere in the middle. To summarize, the IO games conquered the internet thanks to its simplicity and accessibility, which are perfect conditions to make something viral. Although it's many years after the peak of popularity of this genre, it still gets a lot of attention to this day, and it's crazy to realize that it all started from a one-sided project made by a biology student. If you enjoy this documentary, check out another one with the Brawl Stars.